so let's let's just uh, go over what uh, parts of the brain are responsible for fear, right? Yeah, and this will come up in, in, a, in a minute here when we describe how the paths go. There's a lot of foreshadowing. I know, so what if we just ended it? Uh, but the thalamus um, uh, picks up on things that you hear and see and smell um, and in the way of sensory data. Uh, sensory cortex interprets this. you got the hippocampus. It stores... Remember the seahorse? Yes, that's right. It stores and receives uh, conscious memories and starts to establish like a context for what's going on. Right. In the, this case, fear. Yeah. Uh, amygdala plays a big part. It decodes the emotions and determines the threat and stores... Old fear memories? Fear memories. Like if, if something really bad happens to you and right. you have to create like a real fear memory, right. the amygdala is where that sits. Okay. And then finally, the hypothalamus is where it always ends up, no matter which path it takes. And yeah. We'll talk about those paths. The hypothalamus is the on-off switch for the fight-or-flight response. It makes it's go time. And the only part of your brain that can tell the hypothalamus whether it's go time or whether go time is passed is the amygdala. amygdala. Right? It's the gatekeeper to the autonomic cool. nervous system. I'm still just as thrilled about the brain as I was when we first started studying this stuff. I know. I think I'm more it just thrilled. Amazes me. Yeah. So Chuck, Josh, there is a guy named uh, Joseph Ledoux. Have you heard of him? No. He is a neuroscientist at NYU, and he came up with uh, two categories for our fear response. He's the dude. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they happen simultaneously. But there is what he's dubbed a low road and a high road. Yeah. And like I said, both of them happen at the same time. Um, but the low road is basically like the quick, nasty, dirty response to fear, right? Like, holy crap. Right. So um, let's say there, there's a pretty good example in this article by Julia Layton. Oh, this is Julia? Yeah. Actually, both of the ones we're recording today are Julia really? Layton's. Yeah. Is... Way to go, Layton. She's good. Um so uh, w let's say that you're sitting at home, right, in your underwear with a beer perched on your stomach, and right. you're just watching some wrestling. Have you been watching me? <laughs> <laughs> I have webcam set up in your house. You do a lot of stuff because I encourage you to without you knowing. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so you're sitting at home as such, mm -hmm. and um, all of a sudden your door just starts rattling, right? Yeah. Okay. There's something that's going to happen called the low road fear response, and that is the sound and the sight of your door rattling yeah. is the sensory data that suddenly goes into uh, what the thalamus, which sorts it and says, uh, hey, um, amygdala, yeah, I need your help. Yeah, it's like forwarding the email. Yeah, like there is a potential threat here. Yeah. And we need to respond. Sure. And the amygdala says, you know what? You are 100% right, Thalamus. I'm going to contact the uh, hippocampus. Oh, okay. No, the hypothalamus. Right. Right? And and uh, basically get the fear fight or flight response going. Yeah, just like, just in case, let's go ahead and turn it on. Right. So you are now, your beer is spilled all over the floor because yes. you leapt up out of your, um, your easy chair. Uh -huh. Okay? At the same time this is going on, um, the high road response is taking place. Thankfully. Yes. So the high road response is, uh, it takes longer, but it gives you a much more thoughtful analysis of what's going on. Yeah, there's a couple of extra stops along the way uh, that lead to reason and uh, context and that kind of yeah. thing. So uh, this time it goes to the sensory cortex first, and the sensory cortex says, you know what, this has happened before. Or, no, it's it says, like, there's more than one interpretation oh, of what's true. going on. Has it happened before? Right. And the hippocampus says, you know, Answers yeah, that. remember that time uh, in that big windstorm, the, the tree fell outside right. and you thought uh, the boogeyman was coming to get you. So remember that? Right. Like the hippocampus goes and gets your memories to, to analyze them for context compared to this. Yes. The sensory cortex is saying, like, what else is going on here, right? Yeah, is there I a mean, windstorm? Like, exactly. Is there patio furniture moving? Are there sure. trees scraping on the window? And all of a sudden, you're like, "Oh, okay, it is wind, right?" That's right. But let's say that your um, your 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 brain, your sensory cortex said, um, "No, what I hear is a guy shouting like, I'm coming in,' <laughs> right?" Yeah. And your hippocampus is like, well, last time that happened, a guy came in in a ski mask, and I was hogtied for three days before anybody right. found me, right? It, it was not the wind. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com.